brand building for a country, what are the objectives you feel uh, each country has? Uh, for me, when I think about the U.S. brand, um, I think about the power of our example. I think about the promise of America. I think about the American dream, which I like to think that I have personally uh, lived and personify. When I think about the brand of America here in Singapore, um, I think about a country that has established itself as an indispensable partner of Singapore's when it comes to uh, security cooperation at large, whether it's military or non-military, and when it comes to economic prosperity. Um, so the 4,500 US companies uh, that are based here in Singapore, um, they employ 200,000 Singaporeans. And it's not just about employment, it's also about professional development. It's about treating employees right. Uh, the United States uh, is the largest foreign direct investor here in Singapore and by far. And 80% of US FDI in ASEAN is located here in Singapore. And that's for a reason. And that's part of our brand here in Singapore. Economic prosperity really is right at the top of the, the agenda in terms of the, the, the Singapore government's um, um, of goals uh, internationally and, and also at, at home. So um, everything else uh, supports that uh, number one item, which is to, to develop uh, economic um, uh, prosperity. So some, some people might think that uh, Singapore being known for being so well uh, uh, coordinated actually steers the country brand from a from one central position right at the top of of the the, the whole spectrum of, of authority but in in fact in practice it is actually uh, promoted in, in terms of the four sub brands the, the four sub brands of investment trade tourism and, and immigration and the, the mother brand the brand singapore uh, is developed through the, the, the platforms of these four sub-brands. Okay, so if that's the case, if investment and, and the economy is so strong, so how do, do brands, you know, the, the positioning statement like uh, Garden City or a city in a garden, how do those taglines help in the, in the econo economic and, and investment aspects for Singapore? Well, uh, well, actually, it, since you mentioned uh, uh, gardens and greenery, the the the, the genesis, or, or should I say, the germination, initially of this very idea, this very uh, concept and model of of differentiating Singapore from other uh, cities uh, through its gardens and greenery, was driven by very very um, concrete, pragmatic, and economic considerations. The the, the aim was to was to give investors and in, indeed any uh, visitors the uh, subconscious uh, sense that uh, an, an investor, for instance, uh, who wants to set up a, a factory and his factory would be taken care of as, as carefully and as well as the, the lawns are, are, are mown or the hedges are trimmed. This, this was the initial uh, a genesis of, of this mm. whole aspect of Singapore. Okay, so it also sort of leads to the lifestyle issue, right? I mean, if you come to Singapore, part of the work and the employment and the investment incorporates a lifestyle element. Is, is that a fair assumption? Yes, exactly. I think in, in the early decades, the focus was very much on, on companies, on multinational corporations, um, initially to set up factories and later on more, more services uh, uh, activities. More, in more recent years, there's also been a, an increased attention on, on attracting not companies but but individuals, for instance, uh, um, entrepreneurs, um, um, uh, well wealthy individ individuals who might want to to relocate here either some of the time or in some cases uh, most of the time. So everything in in Singapore, in, including. Uh, luxurious items like uh, like nightlife and even art galleries are developed to support this economic objectives. So if, if you like, these are multiplier benefits. But but everyone 
else um, enjoys the outcomes and it all adds up to uh, an enhanced uh, quality of life, which also benefits everybody. So Rafik, just before you came to Singapore, what were your impressions of Singapore? Uh, to sum it up in a couple of words, I would say that my impression was it's the Switzerland of Asia. And uh, so it is no coincidence, uh, I believe, that you are going to be hosting the World Economic Forum in May uh, of 2021. I think that's a recognition of the great work that the government of Singapore, uh, that the people of Singapore also have done in terms of dealing with this pandemic and the uh, great pains and efforts that you, you your people, your government, um, have tried to do in order to strike the right balance between reopening the economy and public health. It's not easy. Uh, that's the impression that I had of Singapore, and now I'm getting to live it firsthand. The success that Singapore has had in 55 years is clearly the envy of the world. There are a couple of words that... Um, well, there are more than two words that I've retained from this great book, but two words come to mind right now, and that is uh, unsentimental pragmatism. That's what this country needed uh, as a young country at its independence. That's what the leadership uh, of this country, that's what the people of this country have delivered. And uh, that's uh, worthy of, of praise and recognition. Um, this is also part of why um, Americans and American businesses are attracted to Singapore. So I don't need to tell you that Singapore is not an inexpensive place to do business. But if we have 4,500 American companies here, if our FDI has reached almost a quarter trillion US dollars in this country, if we employ as many people as we do, it's simply because not only we have common interests but also when it comes to business, trade, and investment, we have common values. So what do I mean by that? I mean uh, anti-corruption. I mean rule of law. I mean social corporate responsibility. 